So um, how do we measure primary productivity, right? We said uh, sunlight comes to the surface of the earth. There are these algae and bacteria we can, uh, which can use the sun's energy to combine CO2 and H2O to produce carbohydrate. Uh, how do we measure how much carbohydrate is uh, low, you know, taken up or converted from inorganic into organic matter? Um, okay, so directly capturing phytoplankton uh, using a plankton net is uh, one way. So the figure shown here has uh, two nets that are typically dragged by a ship or a boat at a certain depths, and you uh, scour a you cover a particular area so you know approximately how much uh, area you covered and it uh, captures all the uh, photosynthesized material that's in there you bring it up and you measure uh, the amount of uh, primary production that has occurred over this area. It's a very uh, broad measure of uh, primary production per unit area okay but there is a more uh, sophisticated way of measuring using radioactive uh, carbon in seawater so there you are uh, essentially uh, using uh, bottles one bottle is allowed to uh, uh, receive light so it's uh, transparent and uh, other one is covered with uh, black paint so that no light goes inside. Why? Because in the bottle that is receiving light photosynthesis is happening as well as respiration is happening whereas in the bottle uh, which is uh, covered with black paint no light is going on so only respiration is happening. So you take samples of water uh, in these bottles and you lower it uh, into the or you have a series of bottles in uh, the water column so here it is showing sea level 10 meters 20 meters 30 meters and so on uh, down to 90 meters so I'm sorry my phone started freaking out stop um, sorry <laughs> so um, you can see here that the, this is the transparent bottle is measuring net photosynthesis which means it's measuring oxygen gain because of photosynthesis minus respiration okay whereas in the dark bottle only respiration is happening so you're measuring loss of oxygen okay so at some depth it turns out as you go deeper in the ocean the amount of light begins to decrease it almost drops exponentially it also drops if you have a lot of productivity near the surface light cannot penetrate and so on and you end up with uh, at a depth called a compensation depth where the amount of photosynthesis that's producing oxygen is exactly compensated by the amount of respiration which is using the oxygen so the net oxygen gain goes exactly to zero and below that obviously just respiration happens and no photosynthesis happens energy is produced and stored so they can respire like at night for example right photosynthesis only happens during the day at night they are respiring that's the same when you go in darker waters okay so you can compare these two uh, bottles the dark bottle and the transparent bottle and you can estimate uh, photosynthesis and uh, the compensation depth. There are other ways of measuring uh, primary productivity using uh, satellites we looked already at one animation showing the greenery on earth and in the ocean moving back and forth we will see that again here. So what that is doing is basically looking at radiances coming back from the surface of the earth high up into the atmosphere. It has to remove the humidity, clouds, dust and so on to estimate the actual uh, chlorophyll. Why? Chlorophyll has a certain uh, reflection uh, in mostly uh, red and yellow or blue and green and so on depending on the algae composition and that can be converted into the amount of chlorophyll that's in the water and that can be then converted into primary productivity using some sophisticated relations and so on. So photosynthetic phytoplankton use green pigment chlorophyll, uh, a lot of green uh, colors, 
Um, so CWIFS, the Sea Viewing Wide Field of View Sensor, launched in September of 1997. Uh, remember, 97-98 was a very strong El Nino till the 2015 one happened. So it launched right in the middle of the uh, El Nino and produced some incredible images of the impact of El Nino on primary production. What is the impact of El Nino on primary production? You think about it. Okay, so it died in 2010, but there are other uh, satellites like MODIS, Moderate Resolution Imaging Spectro Radiometer, uh, has many uh, bandwidths, so it has 36 spectral frequencies, so it can be used to derive more information than uh, CWIFS was able to do. Okay, so we will look at the images uh, later on. Um, what are the factors affecting primary productivity? Obviously nutrient availability. Uh, light is an important factor but we assume that uh, light is available at the surface and then nutrients have to be brought up from below or they have to come from the coast. Now you remember your nutrient profile. Nutrient profile and CO2 profile looked somewhat similar low at the surface and increasing with depth, right? Low at the surface because both CO2 and nutrients are being used up for photosynthesis. Uh, as you saw, the uh, last recording suddenly stopped. I'm having some technical issues, but I didn't want to re-record it, so I'll go back to this slide again. We we're talking about factors affecting primary productivity, and fortunately it stopped right after I finished uh, the sentence. So the CO2 and nutrient uh, profiles uh, have a similar uh, character. They are low at the surface and increase with depth with CO2 because respiration increases with depth, so CO2 is captured for photosynthesis at the surface and then uh, at depth as uh, uh, species die or eat other things and respire, CO2 increases, and nutrients are used up for photosynthesis so they are low at the surface and the things that die or are eaten and discarded or uh, defecated and so on are remineralized back into nutrients so the nutrient concentration increases uh, with depth as well. Right? So when upwelling happens, obviously those nutrients are being brought back up to the surface. So we will see this kind of cycling that happens. It's called a biological pump and a solubility pump that uh, we will look at. And the nutrients needed are mostly nitrate, phosphorus, iron and silica. We won't get into the details, but there are places where uh, some nutrients are more abundant than others. There are sometimes limiting nutrients. So nutrients like nitrate and phosphorus are big. They're called macronutrients, whereas iron is dissolved and it's called micronutrient. You remember silica was used also for uh, forming the testa or the shell by the diatoms. We will look at it again. And a lot of the nutrients actually come from the river rivers, right? Rivers are bringing in weathered material and all the organic matter from agricultural land, forests, uh, urban areas and so on. So slowly that from the coast has to make it into the middle of the ocean. But we'll see that in the middle of the ocean there is a lot of recycling. So the nutrient that's there is being used up being reconverted, remineralized, and then reused again. So productivity is obviously high along the continental margins because you have a lot of nutrients. If you remember your circulation, continental margins are usually mixed up, so there is a lot of turbidity. So light penetration should be uh, much less than in the open ocean, but there are more nutrients. So you still get most of the primary production along the continental margins. And you can relate now that to the fish. Remember we said almost 99.9% .9 of the fish is caught within uh, the exclusive economic zone which is where it came from, 200 miles from the coast, uh, where uh, most of the fish are caught because there is where, that's where most of the primary production is available to support the food web. Okay, there is a fascinating information that was found in the 1960s by an American scientist called Redfield. He noticed that when you measure carbon to nitrogen and phosphorus in the water and in the phytoplankton cells, 
that ratio was almost always constant 116 to 16 to 106 to 16 to 1 okay and this ended up being called a red field ratio obviously you have to think about how this would have evolved did the phytoplankton take up the nutrient at certain concentration or did the water begin to have a certain ratio of these uh, elements right you can imagine that it co-evolved for whatever reason the cells uh, took up the uh, nutrients at a certain ratio certain stoichiometry and when they die it is being remineralized back so that also influences the concentration okay so red field ratio is something you should remember it's a good uh, concept uh, mostly when you go to let's say a place like Mediterranean where the waters are not in the red field ratio then it becomes a challenge to understand how the waters are moving away from the standard red field ratio what are the processes that are producing waters with different red field ratios okay so that's something to uh, remember um, solar radiation obviously affects uh, cr is critically important for photosynthesis we already defined compensation depth where the amount of photosynthesis and amount of respiration are equal so there is net primary production goes to zero gross primary production is just the amount of carbon fixed into carbohydrate net primary production is gross minus the respiration so it's like tax you have an income you pay tax your net income will be your gross income minus the tax right very simple uh, euphoric zone is where there is enough light for photosynthesis there are details for example as the species live below the surface the light level drops so they have more chlorophyll per cell for example okay remember that so you usually euphoric zone is down to about a hundred meters but again it depends on the concentration of the phytoplankton itself or other turbidity coastal waters river bringing in a lot of sediments can block the sunlight and so on and so forth so euphoric depth we had defined before depth in the upper ocean down to which there is enough light for photosynthesis compensation depth is where uh, photosynthesis and respiration are equal to each other so the net primary productivity goes to zero very nice concepts very simple concepts very important concepts that you should carry because you have to start to combine them with the circulation and the nutrient profiles everything has to build up in your head right one plus one